Welcome to Photo Editing 301. Hey there, and welcome to this quick preview of Photo Editing 301, which is a part of our series, including 101, 201, and 301. This series focuses on the entire process of editing your photos, from importing all the way to exporting. And in Photo Editing 301, we show you how to do advanced retouching and compositing. And because it's the end of our series, it is the most advanced tutorial in Photo Editing 101 through 301. All right, guys, check out this free preview of Photo Editing 301. Hey there and welcome to chapter four, our shoot with Lisa as a sorceress. This is going to be such a fun chapter, mainly because we've got so much to do in Photoshop. But before we do, let's talk about the photo shoot itself. So this photo shoot actually is not included in Photography 101. This is a bonus shoot that we shot during the same trip, but Basically, we had a little bit of extra time on our hands, so we did some location scouting around the area we were actually staying, found this like totally gnarly rock area with a tree branch that just looked like really cool and kind of ominous, and basically we matched wardrobe to that location. We wanted to make our subject look like she was a bit of a witch, a little bit of a supernatural kind of feel to it. We got our location, we got our wardrobe, our awesome subject, Lisa Dillon, and everything came together perfectly. So for the shoot itself, we really wanted to make sure that Lisa stood out from the background. And you can do this in a lot of different ways. Oftentimes you can do this just compositionally. For instance, you can have your subject be dark on a light background or your subject be light on a dark background. You can just play around with where they are in the frame. You can also use lighting. And if you use lighting, it's a great idea to place those lights either like beside your subject or slightly behind your subject, creating what's known as a rim light, which is just gonna create a little bit of separation. And that's exactly what we did. So we brought in an Einstein, which is made by Paul C. Buff. This is a strobe. We brought one of these in, placed it in a 60 inch strip box, which is just a long, thin soft box, basically, and put a grid on that soft box. So it points the light just at your subject. We didn't want the light hitting the rocks behind our subject because it would basically not achieve the effect of having her stand out as much. So the light is pointed just at our subject. And from there, we're basically balancing the power between the light from the strobe and the ambient light. So in this case, we're shooting with a 35 millimeter 1.4 lens. We're shooting at an aperture of 6.3 because we wanted a decently deep depth of field. Now, as far as our shutter speed is concerned, we're shooting at one over 200th of a second. And when you're using strobes in conjunction with natural light, you can't shoot with a very fast shutter speed because it has to do with the like how the sync works between the strobes and your camera. So for most cameras, you can't shoot at a shutter speed faster than 250th of a second. So that's why we kept our shutter speed right at 200th of a second. And we're shooting at ISO 50 to not let a lot of light in to the camera. So when getting set up for a shot like this, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you've got your exposure spot on just in the ambient light. So that's where we tweaked all of our settings to make sure, okay, we've got a perfect exposure just in our ambient. And once you're there, I highly suggest switching into manual mode so all those settings stay constant. So we got our natural light settings, the camera is pretty much locked in place and the exposure is locked in place as well. Now, in this case, we were also shooting tethered outside, just running a USB cable to a laptop so we could see how the shots were actually coming into camera because you really don't wanna mess up your exposure. It's really easy to have external flashes be either way too bright or not bright enough. You wanna make sure that your balance is really like, really pretty tight. And in this case, we wanted to make sure the strip box was just a little bit overexposed from our ambient light. So you can do this in a lot of different ways. You can use a light meter to test the light values of your strobe, which is a super accurate way to do it. Or if you're a little bit short on time, you can just pop the light from your strobe, take a look at your image, and then increase or decrease the power on your strobe. If you're doing this, I highly recommend shooting tethered because it gives you a much better view of what your final photo looks like. Don't rely on the back of your LCD. It's not gonna give you enough information to accurately judge your exposure. So we got our shot looking great with just natural light. Then we brought our strobe in to add a little bit of an accent and that's all we needed to do to create a proper exposure for this photo. And one final note, when you're working with strobes and ambient light, Keep in mind that your shutter speed will control how much light gets in your camera from the ambient environment, but your shutter speed won't change the amount of light coming in from your strobe. The only things that are gonna change the amount of light coming in from your strobe are your aperture and your ISO. And the reason is the strobe happens very quickly. So it's like 
pop, on, and then off. Now, the size of the hole in your lens, which is the aperture, that's gonna determine how much of that light gets into your camera, and your ISO is gonna determine how sensitive the sensor is in your camera. So both of those things will control the amount of light that gets into your camera from the strobe. But shutter speed is basically like you're gonna open the frame and then one over 200th of a second, you're gonna close it. But most flash durations happen at about one over 5,000th of a second. So if your shutter speed is open for this long, the strobe is only firing for a tiny, tiny portion. So even if you make your shutter speed much faster, the strobe is still gonna be only in that tiny, tiny portion of that exposure. So keep that in mind. If you need more or less light from your ambient, that's when you wanna adjust shutter speed. If you need more or less light from your strobe, that's when you wanna adjust your aperture or your ISO. All right guys, now we have a better idea of how we actually captured the shot. Now it's time to jump into Lightroom where we're gonna be doing some light editing and then into Photoshop where we're gonna be spending hours on this wonderful photo. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So now that we've seen what goes into the photo shoot itself, we're gonna speed things up and go through a speed edit of our final photo. Now in the actual tutorial, we go regular speed and explain everything. This just sped up so you can get an idea of everything that we do in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this preview of Photo Editing 301. It's available now on Flurn.com and included in your Flurn Pro subscription. Thanks so much. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.